Ah, there we go. I had to turn compatibility on. Oh, Yamsvi. Oh, welcome, Yamsvian. Uh, Yamsvian said I missed it. Oh, don't worry. There's going to be a VOD loaded um, once I finish. So don't worry. If, if you missed any of my past streams, you will be able to see them as VODs because I've been saving them. But welcome to the stream. You're just in time for us to start um, Tally Ho, aka Jeeves Simulator, where we're playing as a butler in the 1920s and we're helping our employer maneuver through 1920s life. And hopefully my Steam info has been updated. Tally Ho by Craig Seagal. Uh, let me just change to dark mode because this is very, very bright. Ah, thank goodness. Standing at the front window of your employer's flat, you take a moment's respite from your cleaning task to enjoy the sights and sounds of a late October afternoon in the better part of London. A cool breeze wafts through the window almost playfully, as if to say all is well with the world. But the moment does not last, as a groan issues from the master bedroom, followed by a muffled crash and then a sort of whimper. Your employer, Rory Wintermint, was out quite late last night and was helping, was helped back to the flat by some friends. In what was termed as an impaired state after an evening's carousing. You have taken advantage of the morning's quiet to do some tidying, all of the ironing and the dishes. Now it is late afternoon and your employer appears to have finally awakened. Another groan and some incoherent gurgles emerge as you stride to the kitchen and prepare Rory's tray. What is on the tray you have prepared? Now we have different stats um, different but butler type stats. Uh, we also have reputation with different uh, characters. Aku says, I have to go now. Bye. It's been a very nice stream. Well, thank you for coming. It was nice chatting with you. And our choices affect the, uh, the different... Our choices are reflect... are affected by our choices affect the different stats that we have. What's on the tray we've prepared? A hearty platter of seeded rye toast with butter, three link sausages, four scrambled eggs, and a dash of hot pepper, and two large mugs of extraordinarily strong black coffee. A calming cup of chamomile tea and an antiacid tablet. A cocktail cunningly designed to ease Rory's hangover. Uh, an attractive iris in a bud vase and a cup of fragrant oolong tea. Um, I think the last one, an attractive iris in a bud vase and a cup of fragrant looking tea. Your employer's eyes and palate will be sensitive after a long night out, but a fragrant floral tea and a blossom will, you suspect, offer a gentle and attractive welcome to the day. You begin working for you began working for Rory about five years ago when you answered an advertisement in the back of a fashionable monthly magazine, asking for a man who could serve as a gentleman's gentleman, a woman who could serve as a lady's maid, a person who could serve as a lady servant, or a person who could serve as a gentleman's servant. Um, I want to play this like Jeeves from Jeeves and Worcester, so I'm going to pick the top one, a man who could serve as a gentleman's gentleman. Rory Min Wintermint was a young man of the leisure class known amongst those in service as a person of whom something might be made if the right valet took him in hand firmly. The advertised position notice, noted that the position would require some simple cooking and light housekeeping in addition to maintaining Rory's sort satigoral elegance. As 
the position looked acceptable, and you were presently in search of gainful employment after leaving the Signant Signant family's employ, you wrote a letter of interest and were gratified to receive a request for an interview. The interview, as you recall, was not a grueling one. Rory was sitting at his piano, idly playing the first few notes of a popular tune, sipping a clear cocktail and glancing briefly at the letter you had written. Good morning, Rory said. Now, I'm not really what you would call the an interviewing expert, but let's have a go and see what you're all about. You can't be worse than the last three blighters. If I seem out of sorts, it's because my well-meaning but meddling Aunt Primrose has wagered that, wagered that I could be unable to quit smoking, which I have done successfully. Indeed, I have quit smoking every day for the past two weeks. Today makes two hours in a row that I've gone without, but she seems to feel that she's won the wager. Tell me, what is your opinion of inter interfering aunts? That was his first question to you when you met five years ago. How did you respond? I sympathized with him regarding aunt, this Aunt Primrose, saying she sounded difficult to please but clearly loves him. I spoke out rather directly on how sensible such an aunt sounds and that she ought to be obeyed. I told him in no uncertain terms that Aunt Primrose sounded like a menace to all right-thinking people, where I said, Indeed, sir. Uh, well, we're, we're against smoking, but we... But I know that the, the aunts can be too much sometimes so it's hard because the only one where we're against the smoking is the middle one but that's also saying we should obey her at all times so i'm going to go with the very jeeves answer and say indeed sir also i'm just going to check the menu settings again to see if i can make the text bigger yes we can do that i i thought it seemed small A little bigger. Okay, that seems good. Rory paused to see if you intended to continue, and seeing that you were remaining respectfully silent, charged forward. Very much indeed, I should say. I'm in my prime, and she need not take make idle wagers with me to influence my behavior. Rory looked around for a pen to make a note, and finding none, took a drink. Now let me see, what did you say your name was? I suppose I should have asked that first. I imagine it says somewhere on your letter, but I seem to have misplaced it. My given name is... But of course, and what is your first name? Hang on, I need to check to see, make sure I've spelt this right. My given name is Reginald, you said. However, naturally, I am accustomed to being addressed by my surname, which is... I, I've got to pick this. I have to. We're going to play as Jeeves. Very good, very good, Jeeves, Rory said. Now, let me see. There are particular sorts of questions one asks in this situation. What would you say your best quality is? People find themselves fond of me. I have an inimitable way about me that is difficult to resist. I am well versed in the liberal arts. One might call me something of a polymath. It may, it has been said of me that I have a keen and penetrating mind. One that would be pleased to, to you, one that I would be pleased to use in your service. 
Very little eludes my notice, sir. You might say that I am rather detail-oriented, or I speak my mind in nearly all circumstances. I will go with the top one. I find people find themselves fond of me. I am an inimitable in a way about me that is difficult to resist. Yes, I can see that, said Rory, leaning forward and peering at your face with interest. There is a certain je ne sais quoi about you that is charming. Hmm, that is a strong r argument in your favor. You laughed and smiled at Rory, and he smiled back. Rory thought for a moment. Ah, I have a firecracker of a question. This is a real tough one, so prepare yourself. What is your worst quality? Be honest now. Now this is affecting my stats. Which, um, uh, I guess a job interview is quite an interesting way of framing the, the character stat raising and lowering. So what's our weakness going to be? I have an unfortunate habit of lying and stealing given the opportunity often without due thought or reflection. My work consumes me at times to the exclusion of other things. I'm reluctant to challenge authority at times. A tendency to become overly emotional, oh, emotionally involved with my employer, and I just cannot hide my emotions when they arise. I'm reluctant to challenge authority at times. That's understandable, Rory said. Quite honestly, I'm the same with my Aunt Primrose. One word from her and I tend to buckle or fold or spindle or whatever metaphor you like. Naya says, I'm a criminal, please hire me. <laughs> What's your biggest weakness? I'm a kleptomaniac. I steal everything. Uh, one word from her and I tend to buckle or fold or spindle or whatever metaphor you like. I have terrible trouble when things get heated. To be quite honest, your words are refreshing. They remind me that I am not alone in feeling so. Rory briefly considered and then stood. Well then, I feel like I've gotten a fairly good sense of your personality. Now, I seem to remember that you have a fascinating hobby. Tell me about it while I put my shoes on. Indeed, sir. Before entering service, I developed an interest that might have some slight bearing on this position, which I thought worthy to, of mention. What was your fascinating hobby? I've had some training in boxing. I assisted my cousin in her art gallery. I was a jewel thief, which perhaps I won't say outright. As a child, I was a performer in a traveling circus, a lion tamer. Uh, with Jeeves? Jeeves has proven to be very good at fisticuffs in the series, so boxing might be a good one. Though with another, he was able to sell one of Birdie's friend's paintings for a considerable amount of money, so the art gallery one may also fit. And in the series, he ends up doing quite a lot. Not, not himself, but he ends up helping Birdie steal a lot of stuff, so the third one maybe, but I think I'm going to go with boxing. I have had some training in boxing. I could offer some measure of personal protection, having had some experience in fisticuffs, sir. Rory considered carefully. This is most unusual. Yes, yes, sir. I do not suggest that it, it, it is typical. I'm not often involved in what you would call melee or uh, francas. Is francas the word I want? I believe so, sir. And yet it doesn't hurt to be prepared. Your experience interests me strangely. Consider me intrigued. Rory paused for a moment with eyes closed, seemed to make a decision, and then stood up. I say, I'm going to pop round to the tobacconist for a moment. It's just downstairs. Make yourself comfortable. I won't be a moment. Rory was out for ten minutes. What did you do in that ten minutes that made him hire you at once? I tidied his living room, making neat stacks of his papers, carefully organizing the sheet music on the piano and arranging his books by author and subject. I mixed him a refreshing pomegranate champagne cocktail, a popular drink um, among the cog cognoscenti. I followed him and convinced him not to purchase cigarettes. I simply began unpacking my belongings in the servant's room and making myself at home. In in the show, in the first episode, um, he did the first one where he, it was almost supernatural how fast he did it because he comes in 
and then Bertie goes back into his room and earlier it was a complete mess it was a disaster of an apartment and then Jeeves comes in for the interview and then Bertie looks back and everything's super neat and there was no time for him to do that amount of organizing so we could do that but I also want to do number three I think we'll go with number three I followed him and convinced him not to purchase cigarettes you followed Mr. Wintermint and intercepted him just outside the tobacconist. I say, Jeeves, Rory said, it's wonderful to see you again and all that, but I think there may have been a crossing of the wires. You were to remain until I return, not follow me through thick and thin. I understand, sir, and yet I could not help making a suggestion. Oh? You see, sir, how did you get Rory to resist temptation? Thought of an apt literary quotation? by lying to him and telling him that tobacconist is under investigation for unsanitary conditions, or by inspiring him with the competitive spirit to win the wager with Aunt Primrose. Uh, I, I think appealing to that. I urge you to think of the spirit of competition. Competition? Yes, sir. Consider. Your Aunt Primrose, even now, is likely rubbing her hands together gleefully, thinking of the moment that you give up the struggle. Think of her gleeful demeanor and her superior chortle. It is as if, though you conjure her spectre before me now, Rory says, my hair is standing on end. Do not give her that satisfaction. Fight to the bitter end, that you, that you may say to her, I have emerged victorious. I shall, Rory cried raising a fist to the heavens and nearly knocking off the flowered cap of a passing lady. Jeeves, you are a wonder. You're hired. Thank you, sir. And now, five years later. Laid in tray in hand, you open the door to the suffering Rory's bedroom. Your tray, sir. Oh, thank heavens, Jeeves. You are celestial. You are a celestial messenger bearing tidings of great joy onto me. You place the tray on the bed, and Rory attempts to heave himself to a sitting position, but then flops back on the pillow, clutching his head. I am not well, Jeeves, Rory intones. I will likely die before sundown. If I die, I leave you half my kingdom. Very good, sir, but before that dreadful event, I wonder if you might take care for if you might care for a beverage. Rory admires the simple grace of the tray you have prepared lifting the iris to his nose and inhaling deeply. Lovely, Jeeves, this is just the thing. He sips lightly on the cup of oolong tea and then settles back on the pillow. You look upon me, Jeeves, as a man brought back from the dead. It was a near thing. I think I'm going to stop now because it's, um, it's been two hours, which, uh, is a good time because that fits in with the spooktober schedule of two hours per person. Uh, also, I have to do something in a few moments. Yeah, this seems like a good time to stop. I can continue Tally Ho later on in a future stream. I'm, I don't know when, but uh, I'd like to continue playing this live sometime. Because it is a fun game to narrate for me. But thank you all for coming. I enjoy our chats. Let's see, I'm gonna find someone for us to, uh, to raid. I'm looking through my channels list now. Michaela's st streaming. Let's raid Michaela. Let me just type out the command. Okay, so we're going to raid her in a couple of seconds. Again, thank you for coming, and I'll see you 
uh, hopefully later in the week. Ta-ra! A girl will bust those out. Cool. Okay, I need you to get off the train. They get off the rock. All right, totally. So far. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Okay. I could definitely tell. Like explorers, uh, people who love open worlds would love will love this game. Because it's just like this is ridiculous. This is like a ridiculously big map so far. I don't even think I've explored like even half of it. <laughs> 